Time once again to go back into the archives. Welcome to Vintage Games here on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Pollard. Today we take a look back to May 10th of 1980, Game 6 of the semifinal matchup between the New York Islanders and the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres had lost the first three games of the series, but were on a roll after reeling off back-to-back -back wins. After ending the playoffs in the semifinals the previous two seasons, the Islanders needed to steal back momentum. This postseason, they were out to prove they had something extra to give. There are your officials tonight. Andy Van Helleman is the referee. Ron Finn and Bob Hodges are the two linesmen. In goal for the Buffalo Sabres tonight, the man who was so hot in games one and two, Bob Sobe, one seven six goals against Avery. And down at the other end, Billy Smith. He was outstanding in the first two games in Buffalo, and of course, Sobe was so great on Thursday night. Can't believe this crowd here in the Nassau Coliseum, Long Island in New York, where they ever up. Let's see how the Islanders react now as they come to center. With Merrick, Tonelli and Nice from all the wings starting out. Lorimer and Putman, the defense. Perot, Martin and Sealing for Buffalo. Well, height and done back there. And it's cleared into the Islanders zone. Islanders cautiously playing it up along the boards in their own end. Sealing couldn't keep it in. It's hammered from center ice, offside called at the Islanders' blue line. Gary, this is some kind of crowd. Remind you of the old days of the spectrum. There's nothing better than to get the uh, the blood flowing, and that's uh, the noise of the crowd. Coach Scotty Bowman, I don't think he really figured the Sabres can, can come back after they were down 3 to nothing. But suddenly, here they are, and you can bet that he'll use a lot of line combinations in this game tonight. Harold got the draw, goes to Dennis Puttman, though. He's the leader of this team. If they're going to go, he has to be hot. Puttman hands it off to the right side. Lorimer comes as far as center, has to backtrack. Look out for Perot. He's always dangerous in there. Martin was bumped. He fell to the ice, down in the corner. And now the New York Islanders can clear it. First shot by Sealing. It's a way wide. Nice one starting down the right wing board. He's at center. Barry couldn't get the shot. Van Boxmeer got a stick in front of him. It's kept in by the Islanders. Here's Barry again. A penalty coming up against the Buffalo Sabres. Big break early. Manelli centered one. It's off the skate back to the line and into the center ice area. And now the referee, Andy Van Helleman, stops the play. And the first penalty of the hockey game goes against Buffalo. Van Boxmeer. There you see him in the penalty box. And here it is. It's a hooking call. Well, there's no doubt about that. And, and right now, what it's going to do is the Islanders get that first power play. And, you know, talking to some of the players, they want to feed Potman more with his wrist shot and then try to position somebody in front of Sobe. Rottier comes to center ice for New York. Dennis Pearson with a shot. That's blocked by Sobe. The stick save in the corner. Orton takes a look. Gets in front dangerously close. Bossy from the corner back to the line. Potman back to Bossy. Bossy lining it up now. The Islanders on the power play. Here it is for Pearson again. Screen shot. We're getting an interference called against the New York Islanders. I believe it'll be Trottier who'll go off. And that stopped the play. So they'll be even five aside. Trottier, interference. That comes at 120. Van Boxmeer went off at 57 seconds. Well, that's an awful big break for the Sabres. You know, they had that power play against them, and suddenly teams will play at, at even strength. You'll see it right at the left-hand part of your screen there, the interference on Troche, moving the player out of that area. And Andy Van Helleman, he was right on the on the spot there, and caught the infraction, and that'll nullify that power play advantage. So they're five aside now. Gorick comes to center ice for the New York Islanders. Gilbert Perrault for the Buffalo Sabres. And there's a man that the Islanders have to contain. Perrault. From the draw, it goes back into the zone and Hike steps back forward smartly. Back of the net it goes. Sailing, hammered it the other way. And here's Perrault looking for some skating room. If he gets it, he'll go, let me tell you. Here's Sailing across the line to center. Hooked away from him, and Gord Lane shoots a long one in for New York. Coming back is Richie Dunn. 
Pike takes his pass from the side of the net. Pike goes back to the goal for Lane. It's by him. Sealing backing up with it. Threw it in back of the net again. The Islanders are fort checking. Here comes Big Gillies. Lane at the line. Took a shot. Tipped away by Sobe on the other side. And kept in. Langevin just played it off to the corner. Now back for Buffalo. Up to the line at center is Darrell coming in. Look at him go now. Darrell! And his shot was fired wide. But he made a big move in front of the netminder, Billy Smith. And hopped out into the center ice area. 40 seconds left in the Van Boxmere penalty. As Hype comes in, there is no score in this first period. Hype with a shot. Rebound! Scores! Hype took the shot. Billy Smith set it up. Man, there's the guy I said you had to watch, Gary. Jovier Perot hopped on it quickly. Well, he made a great rush before. But look, watch how the Sabres penetrate the zone. Look at the way the Islanders continue to back up. Now, Perot, nobody picks him coming through. There's the rebound by Billy Smith. And Perot, what a better position to be in. He makes no mistake. But the Islanders, they say they have to challenge at the uh, at the blue line. Buffalo goal. There's the rebound. There's Perot. He makes no mistake. 226 the time. Perot, his ninth, and it's one nothing Buffalo. The Islanders shoot it in back of the net. Now, the Sabres start to move it again. A long pass to Garrett Center, and he's coming in. Here's Danny Garrett dropping it back, and two Islanders break out. This is Bob Bourne coming in with Henning. Bourne driving for the net right in. And he was bumped with both Bob Sobe making that save. It goes back of the net. Into the corner again. Playfair trying to move it out. Gets it up to center ice. Buffalo on the move. The long, high, rising shot by Mongrain is wide of the net. Now Lorimer, he shoots one down to center ice. Playfair waits for it and gets it. Nearing the four-minute mark of the opening period. one nothing Buffalo on top of the New York Islanders. And Potvac comes back. The teams are at full strength now as Pottier is on. Here's the play coming down on the left wing to center. Buffalo hustling back and Hike takes over at his own blue line. To Richie Dunn. Dunn's pass through the middle. McKegney was stopped. Gare trying to carry on. He was sent flying just inside the line. And the Islanders get it out to the center ice area. Howitt picks it up. He comes in. A shot off into the corner. Sobe out of the net. Steering it up along the boards. And Pearson stops it for Langevin. From there, he'll shoot it in. They've hit the four-minute mark of the opening period. Good play in front of the net by Derek Smith. To whip it out to center ice. Pearson stopped the Kegney. Buffalo Sabres changing as the play goes on. Langevin coming in. On the wing is Crutche. Crutche dropped it back in front. Here's Howell breaking in. Howell gets his shot. And that low shot is why there's another penalty coming up against Buffalo. A shot hit the side of the net by Bossy. And now the whistle goes. And another interference call against the Buffalo Sabres. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Richie Dunn is there. He's off for interference at 4.25. On this opening period, one nothing Buffalo leading on the Gilbert Perrault goal. And now the Islanders once again have the man advantage. Goring got the draw for Nystrom back near the line. It's kept in. Hot back. Pearson then lost it, and it goes to center. Hot back coming back to watch loose. Loose and Savard. The penalty killers up front for Buffalo. Here's Nystrom shooting one from center. That's knocked down by Gillies. And the Islanders have come back on the side. It's cleared back in on the wing and Goring could pick it up. It goes from Gillies to Puntman who is out of position. And it's into the center ice area. Pearson to Puntman. Back to Pearson. He moves up near the line. Nystrom right behind him. It didn't pass it back. And Hike will shoot it off the board. Not out. Kept in by the Islanders on this power play. It's been an effective so far. Here's Gillies to punt back to Nystrom. Hopped off his stick. Hit back in the net it goes. Covering up is Jim Schoenfeld. He moves it from the corner to the line. It's stopped by Pearson right in front. Quick shot is rifled wide by Goring. Goring has it again to Nystrom. In comes Big Gillies in the corner. He tries to set it up. And Buffalo doing a standout job killing this penalty. One to nothing. The Sabres lead it at the line. Pearson to Potman. 
Hunt Man gets ready. Laid it in along the big circle. Gordy got it back to Pierce. The Hunt Man. Here's the shot now. That's off the stick of John Luce. And Savard couldn't clear it by the defenseman. Pierce shot. That off the leg and wide of the net. Hunt Man couldn't keep it in. It goes down the ice and now only 25 seconds. Left of the penalty for the Buffalo Sabres. The Islanders trailing one to nothing, led by Bourne coming in. Bourne over to the far side. I did not knock his stick, and it's clear to the center ice area. A fall, but here's Sealing. One man back, and Sealing into the shot. That's grabbed by Billy Smith. The penalty, three seconds left in it now. So it's over at this point. As Bossy comes down the ice on the left wing, he dropped it to Bourne at the line. He just barely kept it in. That's about all. The Sabres shoot it to center. Once again, coming in is Morrow. His long shot is blocked by Sobe. Buffalo one. The Islanders, no score. Game six of the semifinal series. A long pass down to the wing. Perrault again. Shot. Score! Gilbert Perrault. Left open on the left wing. And here at 6.53, it's 2-0. Perrault and Buffalo. Well, you notice that acceleration by Perot there down the wing. But I thought Smith really played this poorly. You see the shot and Look at all the room he has there. And it actually beats him on the short side. Hits part of Smith and trickles into the net. He did get a part of it, a piece of it, but it goes through. You know, Smith come out a little further, challenge a little better, would have had that one. But Perot suddenly has scored two goals for the Sabres. And that's number 10 of the series for Gilbert Perrault. Perrault from Van Boxmeer, the official scoring play at 6.53. And it's 2 to nothing. The Islanders down two goals early in this hockey game as the Sabres strike early. And they've been killing off those penalties again. Here's Van Boxmeer back to the net. On the boards, it's stuffed near the line. And cleared down on the left wing. Islanders trying to organize again. Borg just tipped it up to the zone. It's fed ahead by Schoenfeld. Down the left side. Ruff was spun around and back for New York. In on the wing goes Morrow. Morrow breaks around Schoenfeld, then caught up to him and threw him in on the boards. Schoenfeld went down. Here's Conte Sanders in. A scramble for it. Finale took a shot. And that was just wide off the skate to the corner. Long shot by Lane was blocked. Richie Dunn trying to move it up for Buffalo. Some great pressure there by the New York Islanders, but they're still scoreless in this game. Perot trying to win again. Perot in the big circle was spun around and back for New York. Down on that far right side, Sutter tried to play it in front. He did. Good. watching Sutter. You saw Rick Martin in there, Playfair. They're all looking at Sutter, what he's going to do, it's, instead of somebody turning around and watching the man in the slot. With the score, Buffalo 2 and the New York Islanders 1. This is Stanley Cup 80. Well, I guess Gary, it's a little too early in the game to get too tight. There's Al Arbor, who looks to be uh, a little tight at the moment. His team down a goal. He loves it. He said, how many people get an opportunity to go for a Stanley Cup final berth? Oh, you're right. 
but it's tough on the way. Coming down for Buffalo, Van Boxmeer, that good rushing defenseman, he shoots it in. And coming back to the net, Sutter. Moving it out to Nelly to center, here's Herrick for the break, and Sutter gets in front, shooting it! And Sobe made the save, and just held tight to that post. Did a good job cutting down that short side. Well, what better player to ask about another goaltender than a goaltender himself? I uh, talked to Chico Resch and he says, one thing Sobe does so well, he really plays the angles. He stands straight up. You notice him coming out there. He had that angle perfectly blocked. He said, if Sobe does have a weakness, it's because he stands so straight up. He leaves those rebounds, and he's not in a crouch. He's not able to handle them that well. He really depends a lot on his defense to cover that rebound. So the Islanders, they certainly want to get somebody in that vicinity to try to pick up a few rebounds of their own. This line of Mary Tonelli and Sutter has been a standout for the Islanders so far in this game. Tonelli has scored the New York goal, Gilbert Perot, the two goals for Buffalo. I'm Bob Cole along with Gary Dornhofer. And Kelly and Dave Hodge for the sixth game from Long Island in New York. Two to one, the Sabres lead it. With 3.30 left to play in this opening period, Merrick now on the draw. Back of the net, Tonelli went after it. He was bumped hard. They start to push and shove and wrestle. And two players fall to the ice. Quickly, the two linesmen are in there. And the referee, Andy Van Hillem and Gary, that so far this series has been fairly mild when you look at this sort of thing. But, you know, the tension has got to be mounting. Well, you wonder when something's going to break out. There have been a lot of good hits by both teams. The Islanders, of course, are a lot bigger on the forward line. They have some big fellows out there, and they have to use their body. Strong against the boards in the corner. Here comes Schoenfeld. He wants to go after someone. Lindy Ruff, of course, he was in the uh, Scotty Bowman's doghouse for a period of time. Suddenly he got the call, and has he ever been effective? And he will be with Dave Hodge in the first intermission. You know, it, it gives uh, Jill Perot a chance to play double shifts with he and Van Boxman in the forward line. Look at that Buffalo hitting there. Tonelli, Schoenfeld. Two minutes for roughing. Islander penalty number 27. John Tinelli. Tinelli. Two minutes for high sticking. Time of the penalties at 16.39. Tinelli gets a high sticking Buffalo penalty. Jim Schoenfeld, Schoenfeld from Buffalo roughing. for roughing. The John These penalties come at 16.39. The Sabres lead 2-1. to one. The two Buffalo goals by Perot. It was Tinelli who scored the goal for the New York Islanders. You know, it's interesting, Bob. You go and talk to the two coaches and ask for their lines that they're going to be using tonight. And they said, well, here's the way we'll start. But from once the game starts, you never know the combinations we'll use. And both Al Arbor and Scotty Bowman have used so many combinations so far, we have disregarded what they had to say before the game. You better believe it. Nightmares for broadcasters, but of course they have a job to do. So do we. It's 3.21 left in this first period. Sabres up by a goal, and Goring with Gillies, Lane, and Morrow for the New York Islanders. And it comes to Lane, Lane screen shot, got through, but Bob Sobe had the angle covered and he saw it. Piro, a little more skating room out there now for a fellow like Piro who can really fly. They're by the side as Height comes across his own line for Buffalo. In comes Sealing now. He stops to get away from Lane. That was a good move. Trying to hit Perot, cruising in front. But the Auditors cover up and get rid of it. 2.55 left in the period. Buffalo, two. The New York Islanders, one. This is Sealing again. That long lead pass. Sealing's high shot. That was right at Billy Smith. He just stood there and blocked it. Now Lane, taking his time. Gets away from Luce. That's a dangerous move on Don Luce in front of your own net. Lane from center ice shoots it in. And Richie Dunn will take over for the Buffalo Sabres as the Islanders change. With a play moving down to center led by Dunn. Dunn played it on the boards into the corner. Lorimer hustles over there and he'll move up. He gets it up as far as center and he was bumped to the ice. Now Bob Bourne goes back with Potvin. Potvin takes his lead pass. Coming in with Trotsche, Potvin failing. It comes to Bourne, closing in. Good move by Bourne, but Van Boxmeer just took it away. And they get a whistle as the two players go to the board. To the right of Bob Sobe. 2 6 
left in this first period. Buffalo two and the New York Islanders one. Oh, you talk about a guy that can certainly break a game wide open with his speed. You're looking at Bob Bourne. He showed us a pretty exciting move there where he cut to the inside. But Van Boxmere, he was equal to the task and was able to break up the play. Scotty Bowman, will this be his last year as a coach? I think this is it for Scotty, but... He wants to move upstairs. General manager, that's... He's had that's, enough. Life is easier sitting in an office. Well, he told me himself he'd like to have an opportunity to spend more time with his children. Born down the left side. He was bumped on the boards, can't move it. Dennis Potback comes in from the blue line with Bourne. And it goes back near the line again, a backhand shot. A weak one was stopped by Sole, no problem. And here we go, we're getting another penalty. And Andy Van Helleman heads over to the penalty timekeeper's bench. And it's going to be Bob Bourne who's going off. There he goes. Well, he knew it right away. As soon as the play was called, he just skated right over to the penalty box. Ramsey carried the puck behind his net. Bourne took the skates right from under him. And he didn't hesitate. Skated right to the box. Gilbert Perrault his ninth of the series to give Buffalo a 1-0 lead at 2.26. Then Perrault was 10th to make it 2-0 at 6.53. And then Tonelli. Making it 2-1. That goal at 8-0-8. Well, Perot in the last three games, he has certainly been the trigger man for the Sabres, doing it all. Now they're just waiting for Gare and Martin to start scoring some goals. The teams. Starting to center ice and watching each other very closely. There's a shot right along the goal post by Perot. I'll tell you, he's been firing bullets tonight. Gilbert Perot with that harmless looking rush just inside the line and he nail the post a minute and 20 seconds left in the opening period Buffalo on the move Richie Dunn shoots one in it's off the boards comes right back near the line again Tonelli jamming for it along the boards and they get it down the ice Dunn steps back he circles Last minute to play in the period. a minute One left minute in this first period he rolls pass to Danny Gear. here he comes up near the line and Gear just made that move as he hit the blue line and the Sabres are offside well it looks right now that Al Arbor wants switch Goring against Perot and it, it seems that every time he's out there they've got Goring try to neutralize the speed Goring can keep up with Perot but you know, when I look back at when we were playing the Sabres in the uh, finals, what we tried to do is pick up Perot right when he got the puck in his own zone or pick him up before he had a chance to carry it because you, you notice how dangerous he becomes when he carries that puck. You see Scotty Bowman a second ago looking up at the clock, 50 seconds left. And there's a power play now on for Buffalo as they shoot it in. More off for the rest of this period unless there's a goal scored. Of course, here's Corey coming to center ice. Two-man break coming in. That's knocked down in front of the net. And Gare takes it. Danny Gare coming out. 30 seconds left of the period. Buffalo two. And the Islanders one. Coming in across the line. It's knocked away. And cleared. Once again, Van Boxmeer moved it up on the right wing boards. Lane was given a jolt by Danny Gare. It comes right in front of the net. McKegney was spun around. With 12 seconds left. Back near the blue line. Two Islanders break out. Eight seconds left. Good shot. Three seconds left. It's cleared into the corner. And the period is over. But they were racing against the clock on that two on one, let me tell you. Well, something that Sean Feld does so well is block shots. You know, you'll see him go down six or seven times a game. Henning makes a good play here. He holds up. He, he sees Sean Feld going down, but he wasn't able to draw the puck back and get good control of it. And so the score at the end of the first period is Buffalo 2 and the New York Islanders 1. There's Bob Sauve, the goaltender for the Buffalo Sabres. I'll tell you that Gilbert Perrault is looking very, very hot. Well, I think it's time for the Islanders to pay more attention to him in the last three games. Now, he has certainly been the dynamite figure on the Sabres. Get a guy on him and just follow him all over the ice. That would probably be their best bet. The Islanders handing him with a shot, and that hits Sauve. High on the head, I think, will get a 
Another look at that. The auditor's still in there. It's cleared back of the net. Boring gets ready to step back on, and there's going to be a penalty against Buffalo. There's the call. Right away, we get a Buffalo penalty. Here at 18 seconds of play of the second period, John Van Boxmeer of the Buffalo Sabres is off for hooking. Sobe was shaken up a little while ago. You saw the shot. It hit him high, either on the shoulder or on the face mask. Well, in any event, if it did hit him on the face mask, I think that would be the route to go. You know, it will take the, the, uh, the puck will take the hit on that mask and not cause any damage. You know, the other face mask that uh, a lot of the goaltenders are wearing, even though they get hit, you know, it has a tendency to cut. But Sauve seems to be all right. He's back in there again and ready to resume play. There's the backup goaltender. That's Don Edwards up Buffalo. But Sauve is okay. Sean fell back of the net. He lost it. Bossy got it loose. Now Sean fell still on the ice. Bossy tried to throw it by him, but it went underneath the big defenseman, and he just stayed there, didn't move, and he gets a whistle. Well, Mike Bossy has certainly been very quiet the last few games. You know, when a player doesn't get good scoring chances, then there's something wrong. You know, you can't always score goals, but you still have to come up with those good scoring chances. Bossy hasn't been able to do that. Islanders with a man advantage. Back to the line it comes, and Bob Ward! They shot the rebound! Bossy! Bobby must have heard what I said. That didn't take him long to respond. I'll tell you it didn't. That's the sixth of the playoffs for Mike Bossy from Bob Bourne. Well, look at all the time that Pearson had to get that shot away. Clark Gillies in front. He has Schoenfeld tied up. There's the shot. I don't know if Sobey got a piece of that. It, it's, we still couldn't tell in any event. There's your goal scorer, Mike Bossy. He has tied this game. That's his sixth playoff goal. And it comes at 31 seconds on that power play. It's a 2-2 tie. What a hockey game tonight in game six. Here they come again. Breaking in. Right back in front of the net. And it's cleared away. Eric Smith getting back quickly to break it up in front of his own net. And... McTechney gets it up to center. Too far. Pache turning. I'll tell you, the Islanders have come to life now. As we start this second period, they're really flying. Langevin threw a check into his man. Pache, a long pass to the other side. Smith missed that pass and went in behind him. Pearson just cleared it back into his own zone. Langevin's pass down to the wing, and here's Bob Ford again. He was bumped up the line. Standing up there was Bill Height. Height comes right back for Buffalo. He couldn't go in very far. A minute and a half gone in the second period. Score tied at two. Here's Clark. Howlett down the left wing. Howlett, or rather Gillies, he jammed the brakes on it, threw it over this way, and it went by in front of Sove. McKegney comes out. Left it for Gare. And Gare just left him on that far side, and Height just threw it in. The checking becoming very, very close. Smith and it inside the line and let me tell you he was back. the Islanders had to hustle back that's Big Gillies waited on the boards for the center ice area Lane stopped a high shot they've hit two minutes of this second period score tied at two Van Boxmeer back inside his own blue line up to Rob down on the wing it went too far and Billy Smith out of the net it cleared back of the goal Gordy Lane ahead to Gillies Gillies pass, didn't get out of the zone. Here's a chance for Ruff lighting up. That shot's got the rebound of Perot. Oh! And Billy Smith got Perot on that chance. Gillies, long shot off the boards, and the Islanders are changing now. That's Ramsey, bumped back in the zone net. Van Boxmeer up to Ruff. 
Rupp sailing in with payroll, catching up. Here's Rupp. He nearly got through, but he was stopped in time by Bob Lorimer. Back into the corner. Canale's pass went too far for Sutter. Buffalo Sabres shoot it back in. At the three-minute mark of the second period, it's a 2-2 tie with Tonelli leaving it there. Playfair just played it up on the left side. Now Mongrain going into the zone. Mongrain passed it for the Martin. And Martin was stopped right in front of the net and couldn't get a shot. Here's Nystrom coming back. His pass was blocked. He got it back again, but Merrick was inside the line and offside. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on... Kelly Dan, it's a great game. Go get them. Thank you, Bob. Oh, good evening, everyone. A 2-2 tie. 10-49 left in the second period. Outstanding playoff action. Nystrom trying to center one. Broke it up. Gear trying to get it out of the zone for Buffalo. Did to center ice. And the auditors, Pearson, feeds to Merrick, number 11, who tried to flip it in. And it's up over the glass. And into the crowd. Well, Mr. Kelly... I'll tell you, have you ever seen action like this? Gary, I was about to say when Bob introduced me, uh, we've seen some outstanding Stanley Cup playoff action this year. This may be the best. And that's saying something after a Minnesota-Montreal series and the Flyers and some of their victories. But this has been outstanding, and it's still up for grabs. Here's Pearson for Merrick, number 11. Back into Langevin, number 26. 2-2 two, two the score. Pearson working it out on left wing to Tonelli. Number 27, John Tonelli. Into a bad angle. Sanderton. Smith cleared it away. Pearson shot. Stopped at the defense and then Sobe came out and covered up and held on. So it's center ice, man. Still wearing that shield. Had that eye injury and continues to wear that. But you always have to have strength down the middle with Trotje and Goring, Wayne Merrickism, that third good center iceman. Pesop will be in the Buffalo zone to the left of Bob Sobe. The Sabre goaltender, Sobe number 28. A 1.77 goals against average in the Stanley Cup playoffs coming into this game. Ready on a Pesop. Here is Mike Ramsey, number 23. Fired it out on right wing for McClanahan. Now ahead for Mongrain. Lorimer takes him out of the play. Lorimer, number four, around on the boards for Howitt. Howitt leaving it for Lorimer. Lorimer into the Sabre zone, broken up. Now Dennis Potvap flipping it back in. Here's Richie Dunn clearing it around in the boards. Richard Martin drops it back to the net for Dunn. Now McClanahan for the Sabres, number 15, to Martin. Martin to McClanahan. Number 15, Rob McClanahan, wrist shot off the skate and wide of the net as it hit Lorimer. Here's Puttback for the Auditors. The New York captain to Henning. He fires it on the boards into the Sabres zone. Young Mike Ramsey, the 19-year-old rookie. Leads a three-man rush to center. Into Mongrain. Tipped it in front. Cleared away by the goaltender, Smith. Islanders, Goring trying to get out of the zone. Works it at center to Gore. Goring in on left wing. Sobe slides off to make a save. Penalty coming up. Gore scores! Gore! And the Islanders have the lead. Three to two. Well, it was just a matter of time. You can't spend the whole period in your own zone. But you know who made the play all possible was Gary Howitt. The way he stretched out to stay onside. It looked like he was going to go offside when, when Bob Bourne carried puck. It's out of your play. You can't see it. There's Bourne coming in. So big. It makes a great save. You watch Lorimer come in from his defensive position and fire the puck hole. The yeah. penalty had been called, so that nullifies the penalty. Boy, what speed there by Bob Bourne. 
and he sets up Warmer perfectly. Wrist shot. That's all in front. Big Solve on the short side. But I, I thought it was a, a real good play by Gary Howard. You know, it was a two-on-one break. It looked like Howard was going to go offside. He stretched out to keep that skate on his side of the blue line, allowed Bourne to penetrate the zone. The scoring play, Lorimer, his first of the playoffs from Bourne and Goring at 11-11. And Sealing as well gets a delay of game penalty on the same play. Stanley Cup 80 will continue in a moment. Grace in the penalty box for holding at 12.31. And each team will be a man short. Well, it was a two-on-one, and the way those shorthanded goals have been going in, Grace takes the man out, was caught on the play for holding. They'll nullify the penalty, and in 40 seconds, the Sabres will have a minute and 20 second power play. Rick Sealing is the man who is in the box for Buffalo. Three to two, Islanders lead. Face off in the New York zone. Here's Morrow, number six. Morrow, trying to get away from Perot, comes to center to Tinelli. Number 27, hardworking John Tinelli to Lane, shoots one wide. And over on the left wing is Perot, number 11. He's been fantastic tonight. His shot off of Morrow and wide of the net. Gare behind the goal, tried to center. Broken up in Tinelli for the Auditors. Gets it to center. Mike Ramsey gives it to Van Boxmeer. Back to Ramsey, number 23. To Van Boxmeer. Now to Perot. He couldn't handle it. Here's Morrow to Mir. Ceiling is back on. Islanders are short-handed. Buffalo now at full strength as Van Boxmeer works it to Gare. Gare tied up on the boards. Merrick in there to Tanella. John Tanella spun around and knocked down. And now Gare circles back. The Sabres team captain Danny Gare to Perot. Perot over to Ramsey. 55 seconds left in the Islander penalty. Sabres can't get it out of their own zone as Henning and Goring with some outstanding penalty killer. Goring dumps it back in. And Boxner for the Sabres. Over on the boards to Gare. Back to John Van Boxner, number five. That's center to Gare. Gare tied up by Goring and, and it's cleared away by Lorimer. Henning hit it for a moment. He's checked. Rick Sealing, number 16, with 25 seconds left in the penalty to the Auditors. Here's Gare. Moves it in front for all. Tried to drop it back off the skate and Goring feeds to Henning, number 10. Warren Henning. Off balance, then centered one, but intercepted and sealing away the center for the Sabres. Rick Sealing. Trying to make a play. Puts it into Martin. Martin trying to get it in front as Trotche comes back on. The Islanders have killed it out. There's Henning after a loose puck. And he's taken out of the play by Dunn and Schoenfeld. Headman's up to Richard Martin, number seven. Martin into McKegney. Shoots one. Oh, a big save with the goal set by Billy Smith. And he held on to it. in the second period. 3-2 Islanders. Lorimer, Bossy, and Tinelli have scored for the Islanders. Gilbert Perot with a pair has taken care of the Sabres scoring. One time Buffalo led 2 to nothing. Here's Richard Martin, a quick wrist shot wide. Now Height held it in for Buffalo. McKegney back to the net, takes his man out of the play. Pearson passing to Bossy, who has checked. Now Pearson, number seven, the Swedish defenseman, into the Sabres zone. Trying to feed it over. McKegney intercepts to Martin. He's tied up at center. Howitt dropping it back into his own zone to number 26, Langevin. Now to Pearsa. Stefan Pearsa. Into the Sabre zone. And it's offside at the Buffalo Blue Line. Well, there's a mix-up. guys getting involved there in the corner 
There was a change. Nystrom has just skated back to his player's box. He was ready to join in. Richard Martin in the middle of it for Buffalo. Scotty Bowman continues to chew on the ice, pacing back and forth. Al Arbor pacing again. And you can't get the game any closer than what we have right now. Both coaches. A serious young lady. 14,995 the attendance here tonight. Islanders leading three to two. No penalties, I don't believe, on the play, just a skirmish in the corner. And now oh, Sean called and Crouch. You know, one time they were both talking to uh, Van Helen, and then they started shoving each other and now we're going to have penalties. Now he's going to send them both off. Uh, Croce, he's a fiery player. He won't take anything for anybody. He'll take it and dish it out as well. Of course, for the Sabres, they can't, they can't afford to lose another game or it's all over for them. The way this uh, game has materialized tonight, Dan, you wonder if they'll have anything left for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers who are back in Philly now just take, probably taking in this game and resting up. John Feld and Trotje get delay of game penalties for their pushing match just as play was ready to resume. 15-26, the time of the penalties. Islanders with a 3-2 to two lead. The Islanders with a victory here tonight would move into the Stanley Cup Finals against Philadelphia. If the Sabres win, then a seventh game would be back in Buffalo on Tuesday night. Well, you got to give the Islanders a lot of credit. Two goals down, and they hung in there. It's that extra effort that you're looking for, and they came up with it, and it resulted in three straight goals. Islanders leading 3-2, to two, 434 left in the second period. Gilbert Perot is out on right wing with the rookie Mongrain at center. Each team a man short. Here's Dunn for Buffalo to Van Boxner. John Van Boxner, the ex-Colorado Rocky, puts it in. Lane is back to get it. Now on right wing to Nystrom, number 23. Nystrom against Dunn. Nystrom takes the hit, goes to the corner. Then tied up by two Buffalo players and manages to force a face-off on the Buffalo end of the ring. Ken Morrow and the U.S. Olympic players and Dave Hodge will chat with the native of Flint, Michigan who played college hockey at Bowling Green University. You know, he handles the puck so well in L. Arbor. He likes to see him get involved more in the offensive flow as he does the other defensemen. You know, if you got a chance to go, why not go in there and get that puck as long as one of your forwards covers up that position that you vacated. People like Morrow and Ramsey and McClanahan have a chance of playing at a gold medal winner and a Stanley Cup winner in the same year. Here's Morrow's shot. The flex wide and Perot for the Sabres. Upended by Merrick, but breaks loose, and Perot with some fancy stick handling leads a three-man rush. Moves it into Dunn. Shoots one, and Smith got a piece of that, and Van Boxner at the point couldn't hold it in. Now Nystrom into the Buffalo zone. Nystrom is checked, and back comes Mongre. Shoots one, a stick save by Smith. Here's Perot. Flipped it in behind the net. Morrow, number six. Three and a half minutes left in the second period. Merrick to Nystrom. Nystrom. On the boards against Mike Ramsey who tied him up. And back comes Rick Sealing, number 16. Sealing leaving it for Don Luce. His wrist shot right on. Smith made the save. And fanned on it as he went to clear it. And had to reach back and grab it and hold on. Bob Nystrom after a slow start of the regular season. Has certainly come on strong. In the playoffs, I don't know, it, it, it seems to bring the best out of certain players when they get in the playoff time. And that's what it's all about. Each round you win, you get a little a little closer. Number 23, and then of course, Mike Ramsey, also wearing 23 for the Sabres. 
He's been other of the people who could, in one year, play on a gold medal winner and a Stanley Cup winner. You think that the Flyers have something to say about that? Yeah, oh yeah. I said good. <laughs> so did the editors. Here's Bourne. Back of the goal for Dennis Potvac. Hot by the editor, Captain Dale, hitting number 10. Hinning, in on left wing for Bourne. Bourne, checked by Height. Height feeds it out to Don Loose. Loose in ceiling with a two on two break for Buffalo. Loose to ceiling. Ceiling, trying to get around the defense. Warmer tied him up. Played a quick wrist shot wide by a couple of feet. And then the editors clear it to Hinning. Height checks him. Now Bourne. Penalized players are back on. Here's Bourne, tied up by Loose, and Height has it for the Sabres. To Ramsey, number 23. Mike Ramsey, poke checked by Warmer, and here's Gillies clearing one to center. Picked up by Henning. Lead pass to Trotchek. So they out of the net to poke it away. And Ramsey for the Sabres plays it off the boards for Derek Smith, number 19. Smith. Trying to leave it for Gare, broken up and cleared by Pearson. Gillies, now flipping one to Sutter, number 12. He dumps it in, less than two minutes to play in the second period. Gare for the Sabres, trying to hit Smith with a pass, it comes to Sutter. Pearson for the Islanders. Over to Langevin, now to Gore. Sutter on right wing, Schoenfeld ties him up. Goring over to help out, to Gillies in the corner. Gilly Sanders, going shot high off the glass. Sutter and Playfair in the corner. Comes to Langevin at the point. Fired it back into the corner. Sutter and Playfair are still there. Here's Goring. And Schoenfeld slides across to check Goring and frees the puck for a face-off in the Buffalo zone. Well, something that Schoenfeld has been doing all game and all year, blocking those shots. And you know the players by now, they should know that he's going to go down and just hesitate for a second, wait till he falls to the ice, and then make your play. You'll see Goring in the corner, and there comes Schoenfeld, down he goes. Just hesitate for a second, draw the puck away from him, and then try to set up the play. Especially when you're going for the shot on the net. Scotty Bowman. That's what very happy right next now. year, he will not be doing any coaching. He'll confine his duties to being general manager. He said 13 years as a coach, that's enough. Here's Langevin's shot. Bouncing in behind the net, Sobe, setting it up there, and back comes Smith. Oh, it knocked it down. Now down to McKegney, into the outer zone. He's checked. McKegney gets it again to Smith. Now Gare a shot, and that went wide. Less than a minute to play in the second period. Gary Howitt for the Auditors. To Bossy. Round on the boards to Langevin. Rick wide pass to Pearson. Pearson to Langevin. At center for Howitt, and that's a two-line offside pass, and the faceoff will be back inside the Islander blue line with 41 seconds left in the second period. As you see Gary Howard going in the box, how about this Scotty Bowman? You know, we were talking today about superstitious. Yeah, superstition. He is a very superstitious guy. Tell some of the things that he carries with him. Well, he carries a miraculous medal that he says helped him win a few Stanley Cups in Montreal. Has a comb that was bought in where? Mexico. That he lost. Flex pennies. He's up to about 15 pennies that he's found so far. Won't sleep on the 13th floor of a hotel. Here's a shot by Nystrom and that save. Puck back of the goal. Now around on the boards. Dunn clearing it for Ruff. Lindy Ruff trying to set up Perot. Lane at center for the Islanders. Cleared it back. Here's Dunn. Nystrom breaks that up. 15 seconds left in the period. Sean fell to Ruff, number 22. Lindy Ruff. Slides it in. Back is Moro for the Avengers. He cleared it on the boards. Sabres drop it back. Dunn can't hold it in, and that's going to end the period. And the second period comes to an end with a goal by Bob Warmer, plus one by Mike Bossy, turning the game around and giving the Avengers the lead. Buffalo had nine shots in the period. 
Islanders had 10. And so the score at the end of the second period, the New York Islanders 3, the Buffalo Sabres 2. But you know the uh, the Sabres now, they're, they're going to have to start taking some chances and, and get in there and really have a, a period like they've never had before. 3-2 to two Islanders. Here we go with period 3 as Richie Dunn fired it into the Islanders zone. Big Gilly shoots it back out. And height number 24 back for Buffalo. Cleared it over on the boards. They shoot it back around on the boards for height. Number 24, Height, to Van Buxmeer, who is operating as a forward, as he has in the last couple of games much of the time. Van Buxmeer, number five, into the corner. For Perot, in front to Lindy Ruff. Ruff, trying to get turned around. He's tied up, and there'll be a penalty here to the Islanders. And Buffalo will have a big power play opportunity. After only 37 seconds, Dennis Potva gets a hooking penalty. Well, that's Pot Dennis. Third penalty of the evening. And down... Uh, That's another play with Lorimer upending the Buffalo. But now's player. the time for a guy like Martin or Gare to get something going here. Sabres on the power play and trailing 3-2. Derek Smith, number 19. The Dunn. Broken up. Morrow can't clear it. Now Gare for the Sabres. Danny Gare, number 18. Drops it to Dunn. Over to Smith. Eric Smith into gear, off his skate, and poked out by Bourne to center ice. Sabres with the man advantage as they drop it back to Dunn, number three, the native of Boston, Richie Dunn, to Perot. Here is Gilbert Perot. Perot drops it to Smith. Checked by Goring as he lost his balance. Goring trying to get away from Dunn, who tied him up. And then Sauve cleared it. And Derek Smith takes over. Smith, tied up by Goring, has to circle back to Sean Pell. Sean Pell to Smith. Now to Sean Pell. 50 seconds left in the pedal. Sean Pell in on left wing, but Lindy Ruff was in ahead of the play, offside. Now, one thing the Sabres are having trouble now is getting it across that blue line, but just prior to that, Goring broke away. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. You notice that Richie Dunn has the angle on him, just gets in front of him. Now, he's not even worrying about the puck. Leave it alone. Make sure he has the man. Good play. Good defensive play there by Dunn. And there's Dunn quite about a story. Not drafted, and Scotty Bowman says he and Sean fell. Just maybe the best defenseman on his hockey club, a team that won the best of trophy. You must have been reading my thoughts then. I was just going to mention that. that uh, credit Great minds think alike, That's sir. right. Uh, credit to Richie Dunn, how he has improved his game behind the blue line. Very solid defenseman. Here is Bourne, number 14. Islanders still shorthanded. Potfab with 41 seconds left in his pedal. Now ceiling, leaving it for Van Buxmeer. John Van Buxmeer. Fires one end of the Islander zone. Lorimer back to the net. Taken out of the play by Ruff. Here's McKegney. Back to Sean Pell. To McKegney. Lorimer tying him up and boring for it. Sean Pell held it in. Lorimer again. This time he hit McKegney with it. Now McKegney in the corner. Gets it back to the goal. McKegney number eight. Good play to Van Buxmeer. Couldn't get the shot away, back to McKegney. To Van Buxmere, over to Schoenfeld. Hot pass, back on, the shot. Rebound and ceiling shot. Back back to the pin. And here is Dennis Potvac. And there goes Lindy Ruff and Billy Smith, the goaltender. Smith must have done something to Ruff because Ruff was headed back and went at Billy Smith. And Ruff apparently has been cut. Well, we didn't see the play, Dan, that happened in front of the net. You notice that Ruff is holding uh, the hand over his eye, but he he dropped his stick in his gloves and he went right after Smith. And it'll be a very interesting call that we're going to see. And Ruff, he's upset. Smith went after Smith, 
up, and now Schoenfeld trying to get at the Islander goaltender. Smith looking very innocent, standing in his crease there. Schoenfeld's really upset. There's Ruff. Well, let's have a look to see if we can see what happens here. There's the action in front of the net. There's one slash, that didn't do it in the eye. Smith battling him all the way. Oh, there it is. As he skated by, Smith stuck his stick out and Ruff goes after him. And there's no way, I'm sure the referee didn't see that initial contact. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Well, we've had penalty call. Lindy Ruff has received a double minor, one for charging, one for roughing. Billy Smith, the goaltender, just a one minor for roughing at 2.47. Trying to explain the penalties. Scotty Bowman looks on. He had made the accusation, accusation against Billy Smith back in Buffalo. Said that if Smith continued to swing his stick around, that the Sabres would take action. It happened just a few moments ago. There's the Islanders bench looking on. And associate coach Roger Nielsen of the Sabres was complaining about the the same type of play that Smith just made just prior to the game here this evening. Well, we're going to have one more look at it. Ruff is getting in front of Smith. Good take out there by Langevin. Now as he skates by, he gets the stick right alongside the face. Was it intentional or did he run into the stick? That's the big question. So a double minor penalty to Lindy Ruff, just a single minor to Smith. He doesn't get called for the original infraction. What you uh, said uh, Van Hellevin probably didn't see, and I'm sure he didn't. You know, it happened so quickly as Ruff was skating out. and You know, you, you really can't tell from that replay if it was an intentional against Lindy Ruff as he skated by. You notice that little piece sticking out. Billy Smith tapes the knob of his stick about three inches below the top and there's that little piece sticking out. There you see it, just to the right of the camera. There's a good look at it. That's the... give you a jab with that in your days of molesting goaltenders around goal races? I was a little smarter. I stayed away from them. Went on the other side. <laughs> So a double minor against Ruff. That penalty will be served by McClanahan. Ruff has retired to the dressing room for repairs. Here's Rick Sealing into the Islander zone. Broken up by Ken Morrow. Morrow number six. He's checked and Schoenfeld takes over for the Sabres. Jim Schoenfeld. Two Perot. Gilbert Perot. Got it into the zone, but Lane cleared it back up. Sealing now for Height. Each team a man short. John Fell gets away from Merrick. John Fell puts it into Rick Sealing. Sealing to Perot, but Lane is there to intercept. Gord Lane had it poked away. Morrow picks it up. Ken Morrow into Tonelli on right wing, and the play is offside at the Sabres blue line. You know, Dan, today talking to Scotty Bowman, you wondered how many healthy players the Sabres would have. Danny Gare is one of them, really nursing a tender ankle. Rick sealing the, the bad shoulder, all those nagging injuries. Gradually catch up. You know, this is the time of the year, there's no way you're gonna miss a game. You're gonna get in there and tape and guts, is that what they call it? And the Sabres are already without Greg Ramsey, who's up with a broken wrist for the rest of the playoffs. Rick Dudley. Couldn't play tonight because of a bad neck. Here are the Islanders leading 3-2, to two, clearing it into the Buffalo zone. Dan Boxmere, head manning it on left wing for Mongrain. His long shot off the stick of Billy Smith. Now Gare 
into the corner. He's caught and Lane comes up with the puck. Lane to Howitt. Harry Howitt, number eight. Lane Boxmere takes him out of the play, and here's Gare. Gare trying to get it on left wing to Dunn. Cleared away by Morrow, and Van Boxmere has to circle back. 35 seconds left in the Billy Smith penalty, which Lane's been asserting, and then the Islanders will have the man advantage. Here's Sean Pell. Now Van Boxmere trying to center it, and Pearson checked him out of the play. Gare and Henning to the corner. Dennis Potba comes up with it. Potba, the Islander captain. Trying to work it into Trotje on right wing. Wrist shot, bad save by Billy Smith, or at least by Sobe. And then he went down and grabbed it and held out. Well, one of the things that the Islanders have done so well, and they, they certainly talked about that, is eliminating the man right from the play. You, you notice that check by Gary Howitt, taking the man right strong against the boards, pinning him there. Now, how about this for a takeout? Danny Gare, very solid. That's all, it, that's all it is. Take the man out. Your partner comes in and takes the puck away. Good play. But both teams have been doing it. Now just 10 seconds left in the Islander penalty. A uh, stick had been stuck down at the end of the rink in the glass, so the Lionskin Hodges retrieves that. That was Danny Garrett on the takeout by Gary Howitt. If the Islanders win, they move into the Stanley Cup final. If the Sabres win, they would force the seventh game in Buffalo on Tuesday night. Face off in the Sabres out, and here's Savard, number 12. Savard and loose the Sabre forwards. They drop it back. Sean Pell can't get it. Here's Bossy. Sean Pell tied him up. Now Bossy to Trotje. Trotje just dumped it in behind the net. Islanders are at full strength. Buffalo still short-handed, so Sean Pell... Slaps it off the boards down the ice. Minute 45 in the second penalty to Lindy Ruff for that skirmish with Billy Smith, the Islander goaltender. Pearson for New York. To Gillis. To Trotje. Height breaks it up and Sean Pell cleared it to center. Pearson to Potback. To Bossick. Number 22, Mike Bossy drills it into the Buffalo zone. John Fell, beaten to the puck by Potback, cleared it on the boards, but height intersects. Height for the Sabres, able to clear it the length of the ice. A minute seven left in the penalty. Pearson, to Dennis Potback, to Goring. Goring leaves it for Gillies, just out of his reach. Gillies then tied up, here's John Fell, to Dunn, number three. Richie Dunn, lead pass for Luce. All the way down into the Islander zone, Smith clearing it around in the boards. Here's Canella. 40 seconds left in the Lindy Ruff penalty to Buffalo. Hersa to Potback. Now Goring to Nystrom. He dumped it in. Sove cleared it on the boards. Rick Sealing tied up on the play. Now able to clear it in Mongrain, number 25. Jokes it away for Buffalo. 20 seconds left in the... Sabres cover it. Pearson. To Canelli. Canelli taken out of the play by Mongreen and Dunn and Dunn cleared up the center. Nystrom, number 23 for the Oddities. Both checked by Mongreen. Morrow is there to cover up. Now Dunn losing it to Nystrom. Nystrom back to Canelli. Canelli cutting in, couldn't get the shot away. Sabres are back at full strength. They've killed it off. Merrick behind the net. And Mike Ramsey cleared it away from him. Still loose in the corner, Merrick for New York, and Nystrom, shoots the ball, just wide, lane for the Islanders, into the corner for Merrick, and Nystrom, bang on the shot, and then Nystrom is knocked down, now Merrick's shot goes wide, here's Lane, to Tonelli, Tonelli back to the net, knocked down on the play, loose puck comes to Lane, and that shot to flex wide, Merrick and ceiling to the corner, Merrick trying to center. Done for the Sabres. Squared it away. Now it is Buffalo in their own zone. McClanahan spun around as the Avenue Sport check. That's Howell. Gary Howell trying to put it in front. Yeah. Nystrom out. Shot and he panned on him. And Mongrain has it for Buffalo. 
They cleared one to center. More off for the Islanders to Howitt. Howitt trying to cut in. John Fell tied him up, and Gare has it for the Sabres. Gare checked by Sutter. Sutter in the corner for New York. Trying to center. Sobe grabs the puck and held on. And the Islander for checking has been relentless here in the third period. And some pushing and shoving in behind the Buffalo goal. Lind Lindy Ruff is coming out on the ice right now, so he seems to be all right. This is Stanley Capetti from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Well, there's Lindy Ruff right in the middle of your screen. He seems to be all right, back sitting on the bench, but... The Islanders have certainly taken over in the last five minutes here with their relentless forechecking and good corner work. Here's Warmer at the point. His shot blocked at the defense. And Schoenfeld will block the shot from down on both knees to make sure no Islander could get to it. Well, there's a guy that comes to play in the National Hockey League every night. You have to respect them. You know, it's easy to play in front of your own folks, to be aggressive, uh, to do everything at home. But... Take that same person, put him on the road where it's a little tougher, and see what he can do. Schoenfeld shows that he plays that type of game, both at home and on the road. You see Schoenfeld and Sobe ready for a face-off between Goring and Perot. It's to the left of the Buffalo goal, 11.45, left in regulation time. Islanders with a 3-2 lead. Schoenfeld clearing one off the boards and down into the Islanders zone. They roll the Islanders, could have played it, so there's no icing. That's Lorimer. Feeding it to Sutter, broken up, Martin had a chance, lost it, now Perot. Dropping one back, it comes outside the line, and Schoenfeld has it at center to Playfair. Larry Playfair flipping one in. Now Lorimer flips one on the board to hit Perot. Here is Perot, shoots from a sharp angle, stick save by Smith. Now Martin in the corner. Richard Martin's backhander just wide in the short side, hot back. Back of the net, tied up by Perot. Now Lorimer to Dwayne Sutter. And he shot up the center. Mike Ramsey drops it back to Playfair. Islanders leading 3-2. to two. Here's Martin. Dropping one back into the zone. Zone, Sobe has to play it. Out for Ramsey. Now lead pass to Gare. He's tied up by Trotze. And Langevin shoots it into the Buffalo zone. Sabres could have played it, so there's no exit. Done to Ramsey. Back to Dunn. To McKegnick. To Derek Smith, intercepted by Langevin. He handed it right to McKegnick. McKegnick, number eight. Long shot. Well wide to the Avenger goal. Born for New York. To Pearson. Now to Bossy. Bossy trying to set up Trotze, but Ramsey, the young Sabre defenseman, cleared it. Born. Tied up by McKegnick. Overcomes Ramsey. But still loose on the board. Ramsey then puts it, and Pearson has it for the Oddities. Tabasi fires one into the Buffalo zone, bounce off the boards in a crazy manner, right out in front of the net. Back comes Gear. Checked on the play by Mir. This pass to Bossy, who dumps it into the Buffalo zone. 9.43 left in regulation time. There's ceiling for Buffalo. Long shot, that gave Smith trouble. And Morrow comes up with the rebound. Trying to set up Nystrom, but Schoenfeld intercepts. Long green lost it. Here's Tanella. Trying to break through. Heights knocked it down. Now a hand pass batted from one Islander player to another. Crosses the stoppage in play. And a face-off in the Buffalo zone. With the score, New York Islanders 3, Buffalo 2. This is Stanley Cup 80. The time clock, 9.23, left in regulation time. Islanders leading Buffalo 3-2. Well, this is the time, Dan, when you really can't worry about line matchups, especially from the Sabres' point of view. They have to keep fresh troops out there, change maybe every 30 seconds, but really get in there and get some good scoring chance. They haven't had any in the last seven minutes. Here's Sean Fell for the Sabres to hike. Now Mongrain trying to flip it in. Nice from interceptor. Bob Nystrom for New York. Centers one to Merrick. He's checked by Sealing. And Mongrain then shot at the center. Taking over is Ken Morrow. He gave it to Merrick. Back to Morrow. Morrow. Up 
Defended as he came out of the zone. Height for Buffalo. Leaves it in on left wing for Ruff. Morrow checks Ruff. Ruff gets it back again on the boards. Morrow ties him up and held Ruff on the puck against the boards. Well, Lindy, off will be in the auditor zone. Lindy Ruff has certainly been a, uh, a very competitive player for the Sabres. Not expected to play much, but when Craig Ramsey had the broken wrist, he stepped in there. Gives him a little more muscle up in front, and you notice he wasn't afraid to get in front of the net. And also, we're working very hard in the corners. A second round draft pick of the Sabres. When the amateur draft this past year, a defenseman, but employed by Scotty Bowman as a forward many times this season, including here in the playoffs. Well, that line has been very effective, you know, along with Van Boxmeer and Ruff, who gives Parole two shifts out of every four, and he's had a lot of ice time tonight. Here are the Sabres, big guns, Parole, Martin, and Gare all up front on the forward line. But Nystrom breaks out of there, Ian Gillies. And on Van Boxmeer to Gillies, shoot! So they just got a piece of it. Oh, Gillies with a big chance, and I think Solvay just got a piece of it. Well, it was a perfect two-on-one break with Nystrom and Gillies. Nystrom fed Gillies at the right time. Van Boxmeer still hasn't turned around. He can't turn around. There is the good pass. It's too bad that Gillies couldn't have cut into the center of the ice area a little more. And I don't know if he just shot wider if Solvay didn't get part of it, but what an opportunity to cut into the middle and a better chance of scoring. Van Boxmeer with 8.35 left in regulation time to dunk. Sabres trail, 3-2, to two. Dunn fires it in. Hot pass for the Auditors. Getting away from Perot. Now to Gorin. He directs it into the Buffalo zone and Van Boxmeer back for the Sabres. Didn't get it out of his own, here's Gilly. The stutter, backhander, so the stutter. They take the way out and they score! Wayne Sutter! And the Islanders have the lead, four to two. And the man is a good, strong four checking. You hear the response from the crowd. It gets sense victory. There's Sutter's reaction. He's excited about the whole thing. To the Islanders halfway through the season. There's the four checking and the giveaway by Van Boxenier. Plugging the front of the net. They just keep going. Goring takes a swing at it. Sutter keeps standing away. So they unable to cover up. Defenseman unable to take Sutter out of the play. Wayne Sutter, the Islanders number one pass choice, pays off handsomely. Well, what a thrill for him. But there he kept plugging away, no defenseman around to take Sutter out of the way, and he finally jams it over the goal line. That could be it, Mr. Kelly. Four to two Islanders, Sutter's second goal in the playoffs. One of three Sutter brothers from Viking, Alberta, playing in the NHL, and he scored a big one here. Sabres on the attack, but Lorimer trying to move it out on right wing. Where's one to center? Troche going in after it. Ceiling couldn't clear it. Now Troche gets it to Howard. Quick shot. Solvay makes an arm save. Right there for the Sabres. Back to Mike Ramsey. He's checked in the play. And around on the boards comes Playfair. The ceiling. And a spot back for the Islanders in his own zone. The number 11, Merrick. Merrick's long shot. Solvay. Giving it to Playfair. He played it off the boards, but the Islanders, Langevin, knocked it down at her. Here's Tanelic into Merrick on left wing. Shoots one. So they a save on the short side. Islanders cleared. Langevin held it in. His shot went wide. Here's Kingstrom for New York. To Tanelli back of the net. And Playfair has it for Buffalo. Nystrom breaks that up. Nystrom into Tanelli. John Canelli and Ramsey go to the corner. Merrick back of the net. Out comes the Nystrom. Behind the goal for Merrick. Merrick out in front. Backhander. Stick save by Solvay. Another save by Solvay on Wayne Merrick. Well, it's just good, solid, hard work by the Islanders. Stanley Cup 80 will continue in just a moment. 
And last scoring play, Dwayne Sutter from Goring and Gillies at 11.50 of the third period. Oh, well, you notice here that Goring fights for it, nobody around. Sutter has an easy time of it, but they're just out muscling the Sabres now, the Islanders are, in every department in that offensive zone. Here's Mongrain of a long shot wide of the Islander goal. Gillies trying to clear it, Richie Dunn. For Buffalo, his shot well wide of the target. Mongrain fired it in. Now Perot in the corner. Broken up by the Islanders. Dunn holding it in. Here's Dunn into Perot. Perot jammed out of the play by Lane. Mongrain for Buffalo with Goring on the boards. Puck comes to Sutter who clears it to center. John Pell tied him up. Sutter gets loose. Sutter trying to set up Gillies then. Up and back comes Lindy Ruff for Buffalo. Goring checked in. Now Ruff trying to clear it in. Morrow knocked it down. Here's Ruff again to Schoenfeld. His long shot handled by Smith and Morrow. Takes over. Played it down into the Sabre zone. Five and a half minutes left in regulation time. Four two Islanders. Then Boxmere to ceiling intercepted by Troche. Now Bossy to board. And Van Boxmere comes back for the Sabres. Van Boxmere to Seelen. He tried to make the play. Seelen hands it again to Richard Martin, whose shot hit Potka. Dennis Potka to Seelen. His wrist shot deflects off Ramsey wide of the net. Seelen in the corner. Round on the boards for Ramsey. Less than five minutes to play in the third period. Lee pass to Martin goes all the way down the ice. Warner. To touch it for the Islanders and icing his call against Buffalo. There you see the time remaining in regulation time, four minutes, 48 seconds. Islanders with a four to two lead. If it winds up this way, the Islanders would open the Stanley Cup final in Philadelphia on Tuesday night. If Buffalo comes back to win, they force the seventh game on Tuesday night. Here's Height wearing it to Gare. Sabres. Get it to Derek Smith. He works it into McKegney. McKegney centering one. Now Derek Smith at the side of the net had a shot block. Lorimer clears to Tonelli. Height held it in for Buffalo. And in there for checking was McKegney who forces a face off as he tied up Lorimer in the corner. Well, Lorimer has to be very excited about that goal he got. You know, if you're going to get a goal and it's your first, why not be a big one? Right now it looms as a potential winner. He scored at 11-11 of the second period from Bourne and Goring to make it 3-2. Here in the third, Blaine Sutter has scored from Goring and Gillies at 11-50 to make it 4-2 Islanders. Just over four minutes remaining in regulation time. Islanders clear it down the ice. It's Height back to touch it and as he does, icing call against New York. Well, there's no waiting for the Sabres. They have to go and make things happen. Al Arbor talking to his players on the bench. I'm sure he's saying, look, let's not get caught out there. Make sure that you have a man, especially in that slot area. It's the worst thing you want to do is give one up because of a three-on-one or three-on-two break. A very subdued Buffalo bench. Scotty Bowman could be his last game as a head coach. Players, they're head down, constantly looking at the time clock. That's their worst enemy right now. 4-17, left in regulation time, 4-2 Islanders. Here's Morrow for New York. Firing it on the boards, Bourne lost it. Islanders lose it, McKegney shot high off the glass. And Nystrom for New York, trying to fire it out. Height held it in. Smith leaving it for Gord Lane. Round on the boards for Bohr. He got it to center. Dunn takes over for Buffalo. Passing it to Height. Bill Height shoots one in. Morrow back to get it. Morrow and McKegney fight for it. In comes Derek Smith. Merritt on top of him. And we'll have a faceoff in the Islanders' zone. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Island. minutes, 40 seconds left in the third period. Islanders with a 4-2 lead. 
And with the victory can move into the Stanley Cup final for the first time in their history. Sabres would need a miraculous comeback now to force the seventh game. Here's Perot on a face-off against Goring, and the puck is cleared up over the glass. Another face-off coming up in the Islanders' zone. Well, they become so very important right now, especially for the Sabres. You know, you, you look at that bench and you look at Danny Gare and Rick Martin unable to score in this series, which has certainly hurt the Sabres' chances. You expect goals from those two guys. Here is Sealing from the face-off. Over on left wing, the point man, Sean Feld, a shot. That's caught by Billy Smith, and he throws it over on the left wing boards to Gillies. Gillies can't get it up. Now they do clear it to center, and Sean Feld tries to feed it in. Gillies knocks it down. Clark Gillies losing it to Sean Feld. Sean Feld. Joe Perot to the side of the net, broken up as they... Islander defenseman Lorimer knocked it away from Sealing. Sealing again. Dropping one back. Sean Feld to Sealing. Rick Sealing. Out in front, shot it wide. Here's Perot. Less than three minutes to play in regulation time. Van Buxmeer shot. That hit Gillis. Going to be a penalty here against the Islanders. And it's going to be against Clark Gillis. He didn't have a stick. And so they was heading for the bench on that delayed penalty. Well, a good effort by Clark Gillies to come out and block that shot. He didn't have a stick in his hand. And, you know, when you when you stop a Van Boxmere shot, you know it's going to smart. Well, we're at the stage now where it's imperative that the Sabres score in this power play or they can forget it. There's the penalty against Clark Gillies. He was without the stick. He hauled Van Boxmere down. That's a tripping call. 2.49 left to go in this hockey game. The Sabres have called a timeout. to give their, their frontliners a chance to have a little rest. Also, Scotty Bowman will go over some strategy. What he wants done at this particular point. It'll be interesting to see if Scotty does pull the goaltender. Jimmy Roberts looking on. Everybody's crowded around Bowman. There's still plenty of time. They have to score. They have to get one on this power play. So May is over at the bench. Also getting instructions from Bowman. I'm sure that he'll go back in his net for a while anyway. Billy Smith looks on. He really hasn't had the work that Sobey has had, especially in this period. Two minutes, 49 seconds left in regulation time, and now Sobey is gone. He's on the bench. Yeah. Buffalo with a power play will go with six attackers. Well, now, Dan, it's very important that wherever that puck is, the Sabres have to outnumber the Islanders. If it's in the corner and you have two Islanders, the Sabres have to throw three men in there. Make sure they come up with that puck. Playfair, Gear, Derek Smith, Sean Phil, Perot, and Dunn. All on the ice for Buffalo. Islanders are shorthanded. At last penalty at 17-11 of the third period. The Gillies for Trippin. And Buffalo with six attackers. And from the faceoff, they rule the puck was dropped unfairly. So they'll do it over again. Well, Arbor has two centermen out there in Trotchy and Goring in case one of them gets thrown out of the face-off spot. He can always come back with another centerman. Good move. Derek Smith against Trotchak. Here's Perot flipping it in along the boards. Lane for the Auditors. Back to get him. Perot knocking it down. Over to Dunn. Dunn shoots one. Blocked it to the fence. Now Dunn to play fair. Oh, Smith a big save. It's cleared down the ice at the open net. Sean fell to Gare. Gare got it across the line, cleared away by Mirror. And Dunn is back for Buffalo. Richie Dunn. Being four checked by Henry. Saber goal is empty. The 
They have six attackers on on this power play. Now Perot, number 11, streaks into the avenue zone. Perot over. The Schoenfeld is back in the right through the crease. Perot to Dunn. To Gare. Gare shot. Saved by Smith. Rebound. Smith stops that and holds on to it for the face off. With 144 to play. Well, the Sabres, they're pulling all the points out of the, the bathtub right now. They're putting on tremendous pressure. Billy Smith held his ground there. You talk about congestion in front of the net. And the Sabres had four players there trying to get that rebound, trying to get one by Smith. Just unable to do so. They're going down fighting. 144 left. They got their big guys in front, play fair, over 200 pounds. Now watch, once the shot originate, how many players are there? One, two, three. Here comes another one, four. Just can't get it over Billy Smith. That was Perot who has scored both of the Buffalo goals here this evening. A minute 44 left in regulation time. 55 seconds left in the penalty to Clark Gillis. No, a credit to both teams with the intensity that they have played. Of course, with the Sabres, there's no tomorrow. They had to play hard, but the Islanders just took over in that second period and continue to do so in the third. Buffalo at one time led two to nothing. Islanders have scored four in a row. There's Perot on the faceoff, gets it to the corner. Lorimer cleared it. Now moving in was Richard Martin from the left point. Round on the boards to Perot. Lorimer ties him up. Gare comes in to try and get it loose, and it's held there. And now a minute 31 left, and another face-off in the Islander zone. And we have a problem with the glass being dislodged in one of the exit ways down there. They're thumping along those boards and in the corners. A minute 31. Left in regulation time, Scotty Bowman and Jimmy Roberts, his assistant, look on from the Sabre bench. 42 seconds left in Gillies penalty. Here's Van Boxmere's shot blocked at the defense. Now Lindy Rupp, back to Martin, into the corner for Rupp. Rupp behind the net, out in front, Smith the save, and it's cleared away by Gore. No icing because they're shorthanded. And Martin has it for the Sabres. Two for O. Gilbert for O. Lost it to Bourne. 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 Stole it from Perot. And with a minute to go, makes it five to two Islanders. Well, you really can't blame Perot. Rick Martin gave Perot a puck when he was standing still. He had a chance to go with it. He liked it to pass off. And Ford had a pretty easy time of it. Watch this, Perot standing still. Now somebody's got to cover up. Everybody skates by. And away goes Bobby Ford. Danny doesn't make any mistake on that one. Islander goal. And that's all she wrote. The Islanders will go against the Flyers. You think that'll be a tough physical series? Well, the last time we played was in the semifinals. It went to seven games. That was a shorthanded goal with a minute to go into the empty net to make it five to two. And the Islanders are on the verge of entering the Stanley Cup final for the first time in their history. There's Moro shooting it in. Play fair for Buffalo. Fires one down. Going back is Morrow, and as he touches it, icing called against Buffalo with 38 seconds now remaining. Well, Dan, when you look at the Islanders team, it was it was their strong hitting along the board in the corners in front of the net. They just outmuscled the Buffalo Sabres for about 10 minutes on in that second period, carried it right into the third period. They had the opportunity, the Sabres, they were up 2-0, and then that, that goal by Canelli, and it seemed to turn things around, and they just kept right on going. Have a fan, you hear it up. 
Oh, they've been disappointed the last couple of years, closing to the Leafs a couple of years ago, to the Rangers a year ago. But this is their night. Quiet the two Islanders. They're about to enter the Stanley Cup final. Nice throw. Checked in the play. Ceiling now pouring one into the center right there. There's Von Graham. Over to Rock. Morrow checked in, and here's Canelli for New York. The nice throw. Into Canelli. Leaf there. Punches in and against the board. Up comes Luce Nystrom, shoots ball. Sliding out with Ramsey to block the shot. And with nine seconds left, another face-off in the Buffalo zone. Well, you notice Ruff, even though the game is over, he continues to hit. Mike Ramsey continues to go down the block shot. Let's give the Buffalo Sabres a lot of credit. And now a 19 and a 20-year-old who are going to be around for a few more Stanley Cups in the future. A goal by Bourne. His tenth of the playoffs was unassisted at the 19-minute mark. Warren also has a couple of assists, so he's had a productive night. Nine seconds left. Islanders lead 5-2. Here's Mike Ramsey, the 19-year-old Sabre, third at the center. Three seconds left. Got in by Margaret. The game is over, and the New York Islanders have defeated the Buffalo Sabres 5-2. They win the series, four games to two, and it's on to Philadelphia for the Islanders in game one of the Stanley Cup final against the Flyers on Tuesday night. And we'll be there for you for both the U Television Network and for Hockey Night in Canada. Well, they did exactly what they had to do. Worked hard along the boards and in the corners. They have the bigger team. They out-hustled the Sabres. So what an exciting hockey game. The intensity that this game was played is a credit to the NHL. There are the teams shaking hands. It's amazing, Dan, that the guys can go out there and knock each other around. And when it's all over, congratulate each other on a fine effort. The congratulations go on at center right. And the New York Islanders, for the first time in their history, are heading to the Stanley Cup final. It's down now to the Flyers and the Islanders. As I was saying before, Dan, we played against, when I was still with Philadelphia, against the Islanders. We took the first three, they bounced back for three. Seven-game series, and I anticipate a long series in that one, too. There's, There's Scotty Bowman. Bowman. Congratulating Clark Gillies. He already congratulated Al Armour. His last game as a coach. He says next year he will only be the general manager. And that ends his reign, of course, four Stanley Cups in a row. With the Montreal Canadiens, a great first year in Buffalo as GM and coach. Next year, he'll be the general manager, Roger Nielsen, he says, will be the coach. Mark Gillies. What a strong game he had. I think this was his best game of the series. Gary Howard, who continues to... Wayne Sutter with a big goal. A trade deadline deal that sent Billy Harris and Dave Lewis to the L.A. Kings for center Butch Goring helped take the pressure off Ryan Trotche in the postseason and was the ingredient the Isles needed to make it all the way in the playoffs. They down the Flyers in six in the final to win the first of four consecutive Stanley Cups. Thanks for watching Vintage Games here on the NHL Network. We'll see you again next time.